Hey guys, Carl Cooper here with OnTheBlack.com. So as part of my series of season-ending posts on the New York Mets, I recently had a nice chat with Andrew Vizano, who runs the Repolitans.com, and we talked about the Mets starting pitching. So here's a listen to uh, Andrew's thoughts on how the pitching staff did this year and looking ahead for 2010. Hey guys, it's Carl Cooper here with OnTheBlack.com. I'm joined tonight by Andrew Vizano, who runs the Repolitans.com. Hey Andrew, how you doing? Hey Carl, how are you? Good, good. Uh, so you've you've been a, a guest on the show before, but for those out there who might be listening to for the first time, why don't you give everyone a little background about who you are and and the Repolitans? All right. Well, my name is Andrew Vizano. I am a senior at Quinnipiac University in Hamden, Connecticut, and uh, I've been running the Repolitans dot com since uh, two thousand six. Uh, it's kind of a, a, you know, a news blog that focuses on everything New York Mets. I do some video, I do some audio. Um, you know, I'm a journalism major here at QU, so I kind of know, I know I have to do a little of all, of all those things. Um, and, uh, you know, news opinion, some funny pictures, the occasional, uh, you know, video for me and video I find on the web. So an all encompassing New York Mets blog. And don't, for, don't forget to, to, to mention your, uh, your game chats too, which which I enjoy. Oh, so, yeah. uh, they've kind of fallen off recently, just because the interest has waned throughout the season. But um, I do host game chats uh, on on game nights, and, and games mostly now, and and it used to be every game, but uh, maybe next year. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's talk about the Mets starting pitching tonight, and um, really, you know, obviously injuries have played a big part in. You know, not only the starting pitching, but the entire team this year, um, which you know has helped lead to to the downfall this year. But any any one particular person or or anything stick out as sort of like a positive this year for you in terms of the pitching staff? I mean, there are a lot of negatives, but anything on the positive side stick out for you? Yeah, Johan Santana is really that good of a pitcher. Um, <laughs> that's really the one positive we can we can point to this year. Um, other than that, uh, pretty much the rest of the staff has been um, underwhelming or has, you know, barely lived up to their expectations. Uh, but you know, a guy like Santana really just establishes himself every year as a, as you know, every year you hear doubts of of oh he's he's doing he's gonna his uh, fastball is gonna drop off or you know he's injured or something like that. And and he was injured again. He was coming off surgery coming into this year and he did get hurt uh, during the season, but. When he pitched, you know, he pitched well. He was by far the best on the staff. Um, and, he, you know, he's just one of those elite pitchers in, in, in the game that uh, constantly goes out and, and proves himself. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it would, you'd be hard-pressed to find a bright spot. Um, I mean, there's the occasional, you know, start or, you know, string of starts from one or two pitchers. But um, overall, the season has been extremely disappointing. Yeah, I I think I I pretty much agree with you on that. Now, you know, on the, on the flip side of that, obviously everyone else, like you said, has been um, disappointing, underachieving. You know, but for me personally, I think if if I had to point out one of the Mets starters that really sort of stands out as having a disappointing year. For me, it's Mike Pelfrey because I really thought he would he would step up to the next level and really either you know show to be a solid number two. What about for you? Any one particular of the Mets starters stick out as, you know, extra disappointing for you? <laughs> yeah, I have to say Mike Pelfrey and probably honorable mention to John Maine. Um, every year we hear Pelfrey, you know, since he's come up, we've kind of seen him go through the, those trials and tribulations of, of growing as a starting pitcher. And, you know, for the last two or, two or three years, we've kind of expected uh, a solid, you know, a solid pitcher out of, of Pelfrey. And, We've seen glimpses of it. We've seen glimpses in the, like, those eight innings, you know, shutout innings. But then we see the flip side of that with Palfrey when he gives up nine runs in, in four innings, and that's happened much too often this year. And uh, John Main has been has been disappointing just because he just can't stay healthy. I mean, we we know he he's a, a decent pitcher. He he can help a team. He can be you know a, someone you might be able to rely on in, in a pin. You know, if if a big game's coming up. And you you send John Maine out there, you think you know you have a good shot at, the, at that win, but uh, he just can't stay healthy, and and it's been really, uh, you know, 
it's really been a hindrance to his entire career. And, and it's been something that it's not something that's new. It's been something that, that we've seen uh, since he's come to the Mets and uh, he's a good pitcher. He just, he just can't stay healthy. And that, and that is a problem for, for a lot of people. Yeah, that, that is a good point on Maine because I can remember back to, you know, 2006 in that playoff run when the Mets really depended on him and he came through. And then even in 2007, you know, he won 15 games. But since then, you're right, he's, he's definitely kind of, of, of fallen off a little bit there. Um, so, you know, looking ahead um, to the off season and next year, obviously a lot of disappointment in the starting rotation this year. A lot of talk that the Mets really need to go out and bring in a solid number two behind Santana. I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on that, if you agree with it, and and who you think the Mets should be looking at. I do think they need they need someone behind it, behind Santana to help Santana sort of take the load off of him. Uh, who exactly is a tough question. Uh, I know the Mets will try and downplay this, but I do think they are struggling with some money issues. Obviously, there is some money coming off the payroll with guys like Delgado and and whatnot, you know, leave, um, leaving and, and, you know, not signing again with them, I don't think. Um, but, uh, you know, who is a free agent class this year is, is fairly slim um, all across the board. And the Mets have uh, many other spots they really need to focus on. So, um, no, I think they do need a, a decent, not necessarily a number two pitcher, but definitely three, uh, um, maybe even four, you know, if they, if they can get them, you know, for a cheap value. Um uh, again, I think uh, Omar and I will be heading into spring training with a lot of uh, guys with high ceilings. You know, the uh, the the risky players who could turn out and be who who came to the team cheap, who could turn out to be you know a good a good pickup uh, and really help the team, or could be just a total bust and won't be that big of a deal if if they are um, if they do do if they just can't perform at the major league level. So I'm expecting a lot of you know risky signings this year this off season from Omar uh, in hopes that, you know, something sticks to the wall and, uh, and, and helps the team next year. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, if nothing sticks to the wall, uh, we may be talking about a new general manager next year. Um, Absolutely. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I personally am a, a big John Lackey fan. You know, I, I, I agree with you that the, the money might be an issue, um, this off season, but I, I think he'd be perfect coming to the National League and pitching in, in that ballpark if he can stay healthy, of course. But uh, big Lackey fan I am, so um, I, I'm a big Lackey fan too. But uh, he's looking at he's asking to get some pretty big money, and, and I know he's been a very good pitcher, but I don't know if he's going to uh, if he's going to command the money that he's asking. I think he's already priced the mess out of out of contention for him. Mm, interesting, interesting. So, yeah, that, that'll be – I'll be definitely watching that. Now, you know, I think, you know, we both agree that the Mets do need to bring in at least one pitcher <laughs> this off season. They do have a lot of priorities, you know, maybe first base, maybe left field, maybe catcher, you know, a lot of priorities. Do you think uh, starting rotation should be their number one priority, getting a, a, a pitcher in here? Uh, the old adage is the pitching wins championships. So I, I do think their number one priority should be um, a starting pitcher or, or even, you know, two uh, decent starting pitchers, not necessarily a, a an ace to tandem with uh, with Santana. But starting pitching should be on top of their list. Uh, you're right, they do need a catcher. They do need to focus on first base. They do need to figure out what they're doing with left field. Um, right field might be an issue if, if they don't, if they uh, if they do non-tender uh, Frank Core. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're looking at five positions and then obviously the bullpen, you know, it was good this year, better than the last few years, but um, they always need work. You always need to focus on it. So um, among those many, many things that Manaya and his staff will have to focus on uh, this winter, I still think uh, starting pitching should be on top of that list. Yep. And uh, I definitely agree with you. And, you know, as the season winds down here, It'll definitely be interesting to watch to see what the Mets do um, this off season, starting pitching and elsewhere. Um, so, I want to thank you, Andrew, Andrew, for joining me tonight and to talk about the Mets starting pitching. For those of you listening, definitely check out the Ropolitans.com. Great website to follow the Mets on, and Andrew does an excellent job with it. Thanks for joining me, Andrew. Thanks for having me, Carl.